Hello. Where's my thing? Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Oh, I can oh, see this you. This is so all. exciting. Oh. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Hi, so excited. Oh. Hi, everyone. We're all here. Sophie, oh. <laughs> Hobbs, Chris, Adrian, Lisa, Mindy yeah. and Shelly. Hi, Hi Noni. Hello. Hi, Caroline and Mike. Hello. Hi, Aggie. Hello. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. thank you. Hi, Tom. Hi, Steve. <laughs> hi, Chloe. Hi, Claire. Oh, hey, hey. Hi, Emily, Frederick. Hi. 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 <laughs> Hello, Florence. Liz, Sean, so Harriet, hard. Driving, Ali. Oh, my gosh. Rab, Becca, <laughs> Sam, oh, Tommy, and Sam, Sarah, Greg, Pasha, <laughs> Serena, Kathy. Hello, everybody. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so overwhelming. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Okay. Maybe we'll try and Gemma, would you mind popping everyone on mute? Just so it's not too Yeah. Mm. Mm. Are you on mute? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on mute. That would be helpful. I was there running through saying hello to people. Hi Liz. Hi, Hi Rachel. Hi. Hi. Hi, Suze, Kate, Nick, uh, John. Yeah, hello. <laughs> hello. Double John, John squared. And well done Claire, for getting top hi. left. Hi. <laughs> exactly. Happy Friday. Oh, thank you so much for all joining in. Happy Friday indeed. Right, Gemma, would you mind? <laughs> I'm just going to mute all and then can you un unmute yourself, Peggy? Okay, I'm going to unmute myself. We've got this up. And I'm going to run a poll, which just while the last people are coming in, hopefully you can all see that. And it's anonymous, so no one um, will know the well the person responding Aggie mm. it's Emma I can't I can't get my face up and I can't submit the 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 poll thing can, um, you, can you see me have I not done something properly I don't know I can't see you but my screen's gone rather small with the people that I can see okay so um, don't I worry okay I've pressed the submit I've got the same issue, Aggie. Okay. Yep, snap. But no, no biggie. As long as oh. you can hear me and see me, that's the most important. Absolutely. Yes. Have you scrolled all the way down to answer all five questions? Because I had the same issue at first, and there are actually five questions. Oh, God, got it. Uh... <laughs> Dear. Oh, okay. Works. Aggie, am I the first one to finish it? Most likely. You're the winner, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> you get you get um, a prize for finishing it first. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> get out of here. I finished it about two minutes ago. Oh gosh, it all, it all gets of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting horribly competitive, isn't it? Brilliant. Blue Peter badge on its way. <laughs> well, Aggie, can we put all of them for question them. five? You have to pick one. You have to pick one, I'm afraid. But I can, right, I, I, did. I, I'll feel, I'll feel that. It's, it's all of them. It's all of them. Okay, great. Great, so we're up to 80 out of 91. Maybe we should just crack on. 
if everyone, most people have done. Let me share the results. So Louise, over to you. Thank you. So um, the first question is around uh, on a scale of one to 10 um, about being anxious, very anxious uh, on a daily basis. And you know, it's interesting, it's at a seven uh, when you consider the, the pandemic that uh, we're suffering through globally, um, yeah, people are feeling um, quite anxious. So um, that uh, makes sense. So um, clearly you need to read Generation Panic to get some. <laughs> um, so second one is, uh, do you feel like you know what you can do to feel calmer and more confident? And 70% sometimes, and that's great. Um, a lot of you already have the tools uh, and you know what to do. And of course, um, Generation Panic is going to give you a lot more tools um, so you can become calmer and more confident. Uh, three is around your anxiety levels. Have they changed since the start of the pandemic? And uh, interestingly enough, 40%, 41% said they've increased a little um, and some have increased significantly. So yeah, it's been a trying time for all of us. And um, I don't think we even know um, just how anxious or how much anxiety we'll suffer from as we continue to um, live through this incredibly horrible time. Um, do you feel like you have the tools to handle your anxiety? 56% um, said yes, so that's great. Um, some of you are, are able to get help or know how to uh, manage that yourself. And 44% said no, so um, great opportunity there to um, pick up some tools today and uh, from reading the book. And what are you most excited about reading uh, Generation Panic? Um, highest there's 38%, yeah, getting simple and practical tools. And I know you're gonna find that um, that's exactly what the book contains. So um, I think we'll stop sharing now, Eki. Um, great piece of information to continue with. So I'd just like to welcome everyone today. I'm Louise Taliente. I'm your host today, working with um, Aggie, introducing her fabulous new book, Generation Panic. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. And for some of you, it's late night, those in uh, New Zealand and Australia. And of course, we've got people coming in from Australia, uh, sorry, from uh, America, uh, Europe, and uh, right across Asia. So welcome, thank you for joining us uh, today. Very exciting day as um, Aggie's um, fabulous book, Generation Panic has launched. So as a general introduction to the book, I'm actually going to read from the back, the back of the book. I'm gonna put it in front of me so you can't see me anymore. Actually, I might I need to hold it a bit too high, but uh, this will give you a really good idea of what the book's about and um, it, it, I think it's a lot easier than me trying to make something up at the last, not the last minute, but um, it's just so, so concise. So the summary is it's in bite-sized chapters. Generation Panic is a simple, easy to follow guide that teaches you to take back control and combat your anxiety. With its dip in and out format, Generation Panic is ideal for busy professionals in their twenties and thirties who are not feeling themselves, are out of control and are struggling to manage their anxiety. So that's a summary of the of generation uh, panic in a nutshell. And I think that uh, does actually sum, summarize it well. So I'm just gonna give you a quick look at what we're going to be covering in the short half hour that we're together. So um, first of all, we're going to um, be chatting to Aggie about why she wrote the book and who's it for. And she's, Aggie's also going to be reading a passage from Generation Panic, which to me is always the highlight of a, a, a book launch. So I'm really excited about that. And I don't know what she's chosen, so it's going to be a surprise. Um, we're going to then host a, a Q&A session and we already have a lot of questions submitted. However, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. We look forward to receiving them. We hope that we can uh, get, get through them in the short period of time we have. And then we'll do a final wrap up um, at the half hour, 30, 30 minutes in. And for those who'd like to stay on, um, Aggie and I will be on the call for another 30 minutes and uh, 
you can pick Aggie's brain. You can ask her a lot more in-depth questions that we'll have more time to uh, uh, answer. So um, let's get moving, Aggie. Um, so before you um, read to us from Generation Panic, I just wanted to ask you about, um, you know, what, tell us a bit more about um, why you wrote the book and also who's it for and why do they need it? Thank you, Louise. Thank you. And thank you everyone so much for joining. Um, I'm terrified, excited, a whole kind of concoction of emotions. But to rewind slightly, the reason that I wrote this book is I used to be in financial services recruitment and on paper I had everything that I thought was successful, what I thought I wanted and where I wanted to get to. And I think ultimately under the surface, I wasn't hugely happy despite being a director and managing teams and earning great money. I was engaged to be married. It was a really exciting time. Yeah, I kind of felt like this swan, like on the surface, nice and, you know, floating along. But underneath, I was just paddling like crazy. And ultimately, it got to a point where my body took over and I started having panic attacks, which was terrifying I mean I had no idea what was happening I didn't even have the kind of words or terminology to describe it and I just had such an overwhelming physical experience that I just couldn't rationalize my my head couldn't make sense of it and so at that time I was just searching for any help that I could possibly get that meant that I wouldn't have to tell anyone that I was struggling so much so I searched high and low for anything and everything you can possibly think of to make me feel good again, quite simply, like to make me feel myself, to make me get back on track. And in short, I just couldn't find it. It was like little tidbits from here or something from there. I'd read 350 pages on one technique or I'd read like a paper on it, but it was just a kind of theory or someone who didn't really have experience of it. And so that's almost where generation panic was not at that moment. I mean, I was in a meltdown, but um, a little bit later, generation panic was born because I, I ultimately wrote it for myself. I wanted something that I could return to again and again. So every time that I felt on the back foot in some way, which happens, that's, that's life, um, that I had really simple tools that I could, um, that I could use, that I could have at my fingertips. So that's a bit of a background. Absolutely amazing, Aggie. And when you consider, um, you know, what you you suffered through uh, in those um, earlier years, and what people are suffering through now, I can't think of a more relevant time to launch Generation Panic. So without further, agree. yeah, so really timely, and um, I know we're all going to get a lot out of it. And like you, go back to it to use the different tools on a regular basis as we need them. Um, without further ado, Aggie, I invite you to share with us the passage you've chosen <laughs> from Generation Panic. Okay. Looking forward to it. <laughs> so here it is. It's a real book, everybody. It'll be with you soon, hopefully. Um, so I really am denied over which piece, passage, tip or whatever to, to read to you. And hopefully it's a good thing because I'm completely biased and think that they're all relevant at different moments. So what I've done is I've kind of almost cobbled together a little bit from one chapter so that it gets a kind of a flavor of how the, the book is structured. Um, and so in this piece, it has um, three tips or techniques and then a little bit about my experience. And so what I um, encourage you to do is maybe think of a challenge that you're going through currently, whether that's um, something in relation to work or a relationship or, um, with the ongoing pandemic, just some sort of challenge so that you can hang what we're discussing onto it. Or maybe it's something you can watch the recording back and revisit it at a later date. Um, so this chapter is called Fresh Perspectives and each chapter starts with a quote. And this one is by Paolo Coelho, which says that impossible is just an option. Finding a new way to view any problem can alleviate the associated pressure. By changing our perspective, we are reminded that we have choices and can decide on the direction we want to take. The fog begins to lift as we step away from our immediate situation and get a fresh perspective on it. 
we can begin to see clearly again and think rationally. Consequently, our anxiety starts to subside and we take back control of our bodies and thoughts. So tip one, shake it up. Try standing in the shoes of other people who can offer you some pearls of wisdom. Pick any of the following or anyone else who springs to mind that you think might have an interesting perspective. Your three-year-old self, your 80-year-old self, an actor, actor or actress you admire, a politician you respect, a family member, or your favorite singer. <clears throat> now move to a new space on the floor and literally step into this person. Then ask yourself out loud, how would they stand? What would they be saying? Or what would they be wearing? What would their voice sound like? What advice would they offer? And what can I learn from this new perspective? Now repeat it, trying out other voices and see how they differ. Breathe deep and enjoy listening to this new advice. Consider what you want to implement. Tip two, run a film. This is a great exercise when you feel overwhelmed. It gives you the chance to be a fly on the wall and look at the situation from a safe distance. So pull up the situation and run a movie in your mind's eye. Then imagine you are twiddling with the remote and can change things to what you want. Put it in black and white, make it softer or louder, closer or further away, or pop it on pause. You have the power, you have control. Change the way you're seeing the situation to alter how you're reacting and coping. Tip three, go up high. Imagine that you are in a helicopter or that you are a bird soaring high above and get some distance from your current situation. Notice what changes when you put space between you and what's going on. What does being up high give you? How does it shift your perspective? What can you see from up here? And what else can you learn? So my experience, anxiety makes me feel as though I'm trapped and glued to the spot. I can't think clearly and all I can see is the anxiety. By changing my perspective and using these techniques, I become unstuck and can breathe again. In fact, I use the action points on rotation depending on whichever is going to suit me best in each moment. One minute, I pretend I'm a little toddler version of Aggie and the next minute I imagine I'm a famous actress. My fail safe, which works a treat, is flying up high as a bird to get some distance and perspective on my situation. I have to remind myself to quieten the saboteur's voice, saying it's a stupid game and I look like a total idiot. Once I have bypassed these opinions and step into their bodies, into how they would truly think and act, it is enlightening. More often than not, my anxiety ebbs away. So go for it, have fun with this one, see your stuck areas from a fresh perspective and realize you have choices on how you wish to respond. Wow, Aggie, um, really powerful piece. I can, all your coaching experience of your NLP is coming out in that, which is um, very much about who you are. So. Um, yeah, looking at unusual strategies and ways to get your head into a completely different space is what I heard. Um, so thank you very much for sharing that. And if that's just a small nugget of the book, imagine what else is in there um, to help us uh, at you know, these challenging times. So um, as I said, the most, one of the most exciting things about a, a, a book launch of the Generation Panic is uh, hearing from the author, Aggie Hill. Um, for those of you who have questions um, for Aggie, please put them into the chat. Uh, we do have some uh, questions that have been sent in ahead of time. Some very enthusiastic people have sent in some great questions. <laughs> so please do um, uh, ask in chat and uh, we'll open up the floor. Uh, and actually I'll ask you the first question as we're waiting for people to put it into chat. Um, 
So Aggie, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, I think this is different for most people. Um, what happens to you when you're anxious? Because I think we're very different for um, everyone on the call today. So for me, um, my anxiety, even today can start off quite small. It might be like I, I get a really bad night's sleep or things just feel like a little shorter. You know, that feeling when your breath becomes a little bit higher right up in your chest rather than deep belly breathing that's, that's nice and free. Everything just feels a bit tighter. My shoulders go up. But then when I get into a real, well, historically, I haven't had a panic attack since back in 2014 um using these amazing tips that I that have come together in Generation Panic but when I did I remember feeling completely and utterly out of control and for someone who likes to be in control that was a horrendous place to be um so it was almost as though my body just took over my my palms were sweating my heart rate rate went through the roof um I lost all rational thought just went completely and utterly blank and for me, I just really struggled to make simple decisions. I mean, things that are so obvious or things that shouldn't have been a big deal became absolutely monumental. Um, so even seeing some of my best friends for a dinner just became just became too overwhelming. It became too much. But yes, all physical, completely. Wow. I guess I, I often wonder when people are having um, anxiety attacks, if they're actually having a heart attack as well, because that's where I started. <laughs> yes, no, I've heard that. A lot of people have said actually they've gone to any or they feel like completely like something is horribly wrong rather than actually it's just a physical response. Um, you know, the fight or flight response is just this concoction of hormones that get released to ultimately keep us safe. It's a good thing. It's from the cavemen that they would either, you know, if they had a saber tooth and tiger in front of them, they would either be able to fight it or, or flee to safety. But the problem is, is that, I mean, for me, there was no, there was no tiger in front of me, but I just was, my body and my mind was processing it as though there was a threat. And so my body was just trying to, to protect me. Quite clever, really, you know, we're going to give our bodies some credit. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, because I think that's an um, interesting uh, differentiation between uh, the two. Um, I'm very interested in the title, because I, uh, I was telling to a friend last night, telling her that I was working with you today on this, how excited I was. And um, she said, oh, what a great name. So what does the name, you know, what's the title all about? What does it mean? So for me, Generation Panic are a group of really ambitious, driven, high achieving, awesome individuals kind of rising up through the ranks and are usually doing pretty well. They've usually got their, their you know, stuff put together, but actually behind it, they might well be struggling with anxiety in some way or have a big dollop that might knock them sideways. However, do you know what's so interesting? So this, the book and the title were obviously, um, this, was, this was a couple of years ago that, that I wrote it and came up with a title that for me felt so defined that um, I was part of Generation Panic and I felt as though I was kind of on that hamster wheel of trying to keep up and being like, oh my God, why has everyone else got everything sorted? I'm, I'm the only one who's struggling, like what on earth is going on? But actually over the past um, 18 months with everything that's been going on, I really feel to Lisa's question earlier, of, you know, is it all relevant for, for other people um you know I'm I'm biased but I think the tools are so applicable um to to everyone and particularly at the moment with with what's going on yeah that's interesting because um somebody's asked you a question uh, uh, around whether the book's suitable for teenagers and I would imagine from what you just said yes it would be very suitable but I'll let you answer that it's not my question. yeah absolutely absolutely and I think um you know, looking back, if I had had more of these tools at this stage than I would have at that, sorry, at that age or at that stage, I probably would have been better prepared to know what was even going on or even just understand it or have the terminology for it, um, as opposed to feeling like completely blindsided, like what the hell is happening? Um, so yes, an education, absolutely. Yeah, but um, it, it 
I mean, from what I've read so far, yes, suitable for everyone. A couple of questions that are, are similar um, around, um, uh, is there a fine line between anxiety and burnout? And, um, um, you know, difference between stress and anxiety. It, it probably, you know, we, we say we're stressed all the time and we don't necessarily say we're suffering from anxiety. So any, any pearls of wisdom there? So I, I personally would say that stress and anxiety is, is pretty similar. And in terms of burnout, um, there's an amazing, the, there's a Yerkes Dodson curve that goes up. It talks about going to peak performance. And if you have the right level of anxiety, it kind of takes you right to the very top. But actually when it tips over and goes into overdrive, that's when you hit burnout. And I think that's ultimately in many ways where I was when I was having the panic attacks that I was completely and utterly burnt out and I just didn't know where to turn to um but it's you know it's a thing that's coming up again and again companies are talking about it non-stop that their staff are burnt out they're anxious they're stressed I think whatever the word that they use it's it's all in the same space it's it's people not being able to handle the change the out of controlness that we might face in life the challenges that are no doubt going to come. That's the one change that we can guarantee, you know, guarantee is, sorry, change is the one thing we can guarantee. So um, yeah, how can anyone, leaders, families, teenagers all handle that? Thank you. Um, we are in a quick question here. I'm very mindful of the time. Um, the one question I, uh, that um, is coming up um, is, you know, what are the, what, what, what would you say your top three tips are for um, managing anxiety? Buy the book, obviously. <laughs> tip, tip one, go, get, get online and order it. Um, completely biased. But um, for me, probably the two, the two other things that have, have been a huge um, help for myself is not firstly learning how to breathe properly because as I was saying earlier, it was just also high and that in itself sends messages to your brain that you're not, that you're not okay. And that in turn kind of kicks off a spiral. And, um, and also just having an awareness of your body because it, now I'm much clearer about when I'm starting to feel anxious and what's happening and rather than going, oh God, no, I don't have time for that. Or I'm just going to plow on with the next thing. I'm more prepared to kind of acknowledge it. Um, I think we're all living in a very heady world and um, we all kind of live up here and actually we need to kind of reconnect with, with, with the body that's carrying us around a little bit. Yeah, I found that breath work very, very useful. Um, and mm -hmm. they do a lot with um, mindfulness as well. Um, yeah. There's an interesting question here. I know we're running out of time for those who are leaving. And I, I want to get to the last piece before they leave and then we can continue with the questions. But one that struck me is there is a connection um, with anxiety and depression. And, and I think that's the reason I, uh, I think that's an interesting question is there are so many people out there at the moment that are suffering from depression, especially young teenagers who just aren't coping at all. Is there a connection between the two? Doctor. <laughs> I was just about to say I am not a doctor and I feel like that is out of my field of expertise for me depression is I almost think of it as physically you know like I think of depression as being physically hunched over you know if you see someone who's feeling that low you can usually see it in their in their body whereas for me someone who's anxious is more like upright but just so tight and so kind of sprung up like a you know like a champagne cork or something about to blow and for me that's the main difference but I personally think from how I think of anxiety is that it's a worry or um, a concern usually about something that's upcoming whereas I've heard that depression is potentially looking back a little bit more but yeah out of I'm not I'm no doctor just to be clear yeah, I thought, I thought it might. <laughs> Dr. Aggie, maybe that's the new path. Yeah, Dr. Aggie Hill. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank um, you. Aggie, we do have a lot more questions, um, but I'm uh, conscious of the time for those who have to um, uh, depart. Um, so 
tell us where can we find Generation Panic? You can find it everywhere. Well, in the modern times, pretty much everywhere. So um, all the places you can possibly imagine, like Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, Waterstones. I've done an audio book if you want to listen to me as you wander around a nice park or something. Um, so all available for pre-order and not pre-order, now order. I'm so used to saying pre-order. Now you can really order it. Um, and Yes, yeah, so all available online and would love everyone's support to buy a copy, tell your friends about it. Um, there've been over a hundred people on this call, which is mind blowing in itself. Thank you so much. But if if all those hundred people texted a hundred, you know, 10 people with, you've got to read this or try and share it on social media, it would just, it'd be completely life-changing for so many people and, so yes, I need your help. This is a call to action. Please help me spread the word and get this to the people who I think can benefit so hugely and don't need to feel as shitty as they are at the moment. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, gifting this book as well, I think would be very useful. So for those of you who've got birthdays coming up or you just want to give a special gift to someone, I think this is an ideal, I don't think, I know it's an ideal book to, um, uh, share and uh, to give to others. So, Eggie, would you like to close off? Um... Yes, I would love to. So for those who are leaving, thank you so much. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, it means so much. I feel quite emotional, but, um, <laughs> but it really means a lot. This is, um, I feel very, um, hold on. <laughs> it's very overwhelming to have this support. Yeah, exactly. Breathe. I probably forgot to breathe in that moment. That's a kind of big reminder. <laughs> but I've written down thank you, so I hopefully wouldn't forget someone. But um, Louise and Gemma, who are help helping me support this call, thank you so much. I feel very supported. Um, oh, right. John Hunt <laughs> Publishing, he took a chance on me. Um, Mike Mann, who introduced me, Christina Roth, who um, was my editor, Millie Baring, who did all the amazing illustrations, the endorsements, Rob Barmer, Alice McIntosh, David Pendleton, um, Rachel Kelly, Ian McDermott, Karen Kimsey House and Charlie Watson, thank you so much. Everyone on this call, um, I've trained with you, I've coached you, you've coached me. I've worked with you. There's friends, family, friends and family. My husband got him, amazing. The kids here are wonderful. And um, you've just all had such a huge impact on, on Generation Panic. You've, you've contributed in more ways than you can imagine. So thank you. Peggy, thank you. And um, crying is infectious. So um, a few of us might start, we might join you. Um, but yeah, fantastic day for you. Um, for those of you who could only join us for the first part, we've come to the um, end of the main launch. I really wanna thank you all for the fabulous comments you've left uh, in chat. And I know that um, Aggie will spend quite a bit of time. Yes, um, thank going you. Over those um, later when she's got more time because there, there were about 105 people on the call, which is amazing. Um, thank you so much for uh, spending time um, with us today and uh, hearing more about Generation Panic. We encourage you to get out there and um, buy the book, um, provide reviews and to um, encourage your friends to read it as well. It'll make a huge difference. So thanks for joining the call. Um, Thank you so much, everybody. Sorry, I just it's just such an, an important moment and everyone on this call has, even if they don't even realize it, has had a say in this book and have directed me in some way. So thank you. Oh, I feel better, like release. Look, that's a champagne cork. When you when you don't let it off, it just <laughs> too much. Um, so um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night to those who are leaving us. For those who'd like to stay on the call, um, Aggie and I will be here. We'll cry a little bit more and answer some more questions. <laughs> Hopefully not too much more crying. I feel like I've got it out now. I've said, it's just a thank you. It's because it's all these people are so 
important and have supported me they probably don't even realize so yeah from the bottom of my heart thank you well your book's a big support for everyone else Aggie so thank you for writing it taking the time and um producing such a, a simple and easy um guide to follow thanks Louise oh right onwards questions <laughs> <laughs> So, um, somebody did ask you a question, and I don't know if they're still on the call. Um, it was about trying to write a book and having children. <laughs> Which oh, was, gosh. Yeah. So, to give you a background of, the, of my writing process, so I obviously, um, I resigned then from my financial services role I, about a year after. So, I, I was much... Um, as mentioned, I was engaged to be married and I thought maybe that was what was tipping me over the edge. And I think ultimately I got to the other side of that and thought, actually, this is not um, really where I want to be long term. And how can I find something that's going to be more fulfilling? And I started writing after I'd resigned, so back in um, 20, 2015. And the first draft was so easy. It just kind of spilled out it was like I was bursting with all this information all of these incredible tips and um I just couldn't couldn't hold myself back so the first draft was super easy and then after that I just got in my own way there was so much procrastination and what I was worried about and getting it out there and I finally got to this point where I thought this is amazing that I have this resource but if there's one person out there who is feeling as awful as I did like shame on me if I can't make it available for them and I just firmly believe that it's a lack of knowledge to feel happier and healthier and better and Generation Panic provides that so it really became this kind of like calling card or I don't know this like mission to try and get it into the hands of those people those people who just there's an easier way and it's it's possible for them. Yeah, it's a, I know it's a big undertaking. Um, uh, one of my closest friends is an author and um, she also has a couple of kids, so. Um, oh yeah, so I didn't even mention the kids part. So I'd written the bulk of it before I had children. And, um, uh. <laughs> and yes, it's a good reminder. But when I was still kind of going over it and then also the process since of trying to find an agent, a publisher, considering self-publishing and that route, that was all with kids. And I mean, we just, we, I mean, just like any parent, we kind of get on with it. I don't know, it felt more important to get it out there. And that was more of a driver for me. Um, yeah, this is, this is for the kids really. I mean, that's, that's it. If they're happy and anxious free or have a better relationship to anxiety, then my job is done. Fantastic, yeah, and, and, and I, I know so many different people will um, benefit from it. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see um, what your children think of it when they get older and appreciate it. Yeah. Do you know what, it's so funny just to bring it, we were putting them to bed earlier, early bedtime tonight before the call. And I just said, I'm gonna tell you about this day. You know, they have no idea, they're still so young, but I'm gonna tell them about this day. And, and that's very, very cool. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I know they'll be really proud of you, just like we are. Thank you. Um, so there are lots of other questions in here, and I'm just trying to keep um, up with them. Um, but Lara just sent through a question on, do you think you'll write another book? Oh, I have a couple of ideas. But I mean, for now, I think I just need to take a breather and um, pause. Actually, one of the chapters in the book is about celebrating and not just rushing on to the next thing and the next exciting endeavor, but just whew, decompressing um, and yeah, looking at all I've done. I'm, I'm really proud. As you should be. Um, there's a question that's come up from Gabriel Cox and, um, and I'm not surprised by this question. Um, you know, have you got tips for young adults trying to get into the world of coaching? You know, when, when the piece you read was, uh, and, uh, for those who don't know, I'm also a, a, a leadership coach. I've been trained in NLP as well. And um, it, I, that's all I could hear uh, in your, during your reading. But um, you know, what path did you take from financial services to coaching and what type of coaching do you offer? So um, 
slightly off the book, but it's still relevant because your coaching yes. uh, experience is a huge part of this book. I completely agree. So the, my coaching experience, both um, receiving it and also um, hello to Caroline and Chan, who have been amazing in the past and, and other coaches that I've had along the way. And um, I've completely forgotten the question. Completely forgotten it. Moving from financial services into coaching. Oh, yes. So for me, I... Um, so after I resigned and I was like, right, what on earth am I going to do? What's going to make me happy? And I tried everything you can possibly think of from like yoga to financial statements, ceramics, coding. Gotham and I went motorbiking across the Himalayas. And one of the courses that we did was coaching for business um, with City University. And it was always a really miserable Tuesday night. And I would sit there as dreary rain up against the window and I was like oh my god this is amazing this this I can't believe that this has been here and I didn't know about it and so I then went on and trained with um, CTI the coaches training institute and also on the NLP side as you know um, with international training seminars who um, incidentally I'm currently going through their master practitioner course as well and all of these things have played such an impact into Generation Panic because I learned so much. There was so much juice and goodness and all these pearls of wisdom that came into that. Um, and so for me, the transition over into coaching was a very obvious one in the end. I was, you know, this just totally fired me up. It made me feel completely lit up. And I was like, this is amazing. I, I get to do that. I get to get paid for this. And Hopefully some of some clients old and new and current who are on the call will feel that. Um, so yes, I mean, just go and try it out or get a coach, go and do a course. I'm happy to have a call with anyone. Um, yeah. And now I work with leaders, rising talent to feel great, like to be operating at their best, to be operating at the highest level, be more effective and I absolutely love it. I feel very, very fortunate to have found something that I enjoy so much. Yes, I think you've truly found um, your purpose in life. It's <laughs> amazing. Um, it's, a, it's a great thing to find. Um, I'm, I'm trying to honour all the questions that were asked in the chat. So I've been working my way through them. Um, so if I've um, missed your question, you're still on the call, my apologies. Um, please do, um, well, there's another message just come through that says thank you. Um, I do have some other questions that came in earlier. Um, you know, when, when I look at the book, it's, um, you know, there's, it, it's small print. <laughs> there's so much information packed into it. So how would you, how would I get the most out of reading this book? Well, what would um, be your advice on how to tackle the book? So for me, so every chapter follows the same format um, that it gives kind of, it starts with a quote and then there's an overview or a snapshot. Then why is it important to generation panic? A number of tips and then my experience and, and like a follow up. So two ways, or actually, I mean, there's many ways you can read it from back to front if you really like, but the, two main ways that I think you could read it are there's 44 chapters and you can either just flip through and go right that chapter seems of interest or that's speaking to me the most and that's where I'm going to start and particularly if you're feeling incredibly anxious you won't have the headspace to read an entire book you're just going to want to dip in get a really super easy um, technique that you can apply and feel the effect of in a positive way and then, and then um, revisit at a later date. But what I strongly advise is that in time, everyone go back through and read from start to finish, that they actually read every chapter. Because even if you think, oh no, this isn't really relevant, or maybe this doesn't speak to me as much, there will still be something in there that is, again, I'm so biased, but I mean, there's gonna be something in there that you're gonna learn and might get you to think about something different or, flip things on its head or I don't know just so yes two main ways read it from start to finish or dip in and out I think that's sorry just to continue um I think that's the real beauty of the book is that you can dip in and out of it and 
it really is a resource book that you can return to again and again so that you know the amount of times I even pick it up even now so even today I was having a flick through and I was like oh yeah how could I forget that you know that's going to be so relevant for me tonight um so my hope my dream is that I'll walk into people's homes and they'll just have this sat by the loo or by their bed and it's going to be well thumbed and completely you know scribbles in all the all the sides and sticky notes out of it all um but everyone just finds whichever tool that works for them and um yeah brings it all together thanks for that okay it sounds like there's um something in there for everyone and no, no matter how your anxiety um turns up um, yeah. You asked a very interesting question by Izzy. You know Izzy? Is yes. That... Great. Izzy, Izzy. Izzy, yes, because I'm having problems pronouncing the surname. My apologies. Um, he or a she? He. Dr. Doctor Izzy, actually. We should have asked about Dr. Izzy on the, on the depression question. But yeah, sorry. Dr. Izzy. Hi, Dr. Izzy. Thanks for the question. So he wants to know when the TEDx lecture series is going to kick off oh my gosh I mean I can't even get through this call without crying Issy was at our wedding as well and I couldn't make it through that without crying so I think I would have to have I don't know but yes I mean live and hope I think I need to re this this book was such a goal for me and such a huge mountain and I feel like I'm at the peak of it and I just kind of want to enjoy it but maybe I need to search around for the next the next thing who knows yeah watch this space yeah, just enjoy the enjoy the celebrations for the moment. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Undertaking. Um, so one question I this is this comes from me. Um, mm. You know, writing a book like this is huge. The research you've done, uh, the references uh, I've seen in there. But wow, this is a lifetime's undertaking. Um, and and it's your first book. So what surprised you the most about um, putting this together? um what surprised me that's a great question that things change so I might or I historically have used a technique and it's worked for me like a dream and it's really helped but then I'll be faced with a new situation and I realize actually I need something else and so the realization that I have something that I can return to which has again bias but everything in one place that you could possibly need to feel better in the face of anxiety is just so powerful um I explained it the other day to someone as though um it's almost like the reader is a, a pizza chef and you know one day you might like a Hawaiian and the next day you like a pepperoni but being able to decide and pick and choose and pick and mix and say oh does that taste good does that work for me or actually no that doesn't help or that that does you know and having the flexibility to go back and reassess and revisit is um probably the biggest takeaway that i've i've um yeah i've taken away from it thanks for sharing that aggie it's um it sounds like a really powerful journey you've been on as well yeah it yeah has been. so dominic's asking you the import how how important is meditation in managing anxiety is there a comment on that in the book absolutely so um there is a chapter on meditation and mindfulness and dom talks to a really interesting point because when i was struggling with anxiety the amount of people who said to me oh just do a bit of meditation or try out a bit of headspace and i used to sit down and be like okay i'm going to get into my headspace and then my mind would just be running at a gazillion miles an hour and i think i just don't get this <laughs> and so almost going back to what we said before, that is one tool in the toolbox. That is one chapter out of 44 different ones that you can try. So it's merely, it, you know, for, for Dom, that might be the best thing that he can possibly do. That might be the most important um, tool in his toolkit to manage anxiety. But for Louise, you might want to do the Fresh Perspectives one, or you might want to do a breathing one, or 
um, Adrian might want to do a one on, I don't know. You could, so everyone is that pick and mix again. It's that kind of pizza. But yes, meditation is important for people. Yeah, for, for yeah, I, I can't meditate for whatever reason. And um, I was talking <laughs> to a girlfriend on the weekend. She's doing a, um, a program at um, SMU here in Singapore around um, mindfulness. And the, her instructor was trying to get her to focus on her big toe. The two of us are sitting there having coffee, focusing on her big toe, going, uh, are we meditating now? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think. I mean, it, uh, however, I don't want to belittle it because for some people it's a complete game changer and it can really um, impact their um, relationship to anxiety in a very positive way. And then great, do more of it. Bring, bring it, you know, amp it up. Make it, a, if it's an eight out of 10, make it a 10 out of 10. Um, but if you're someone who maybe that doesn't feel like the most easy thing to start with, then try something else and see where you get to. Try a different chapter in the book. Yeah, and that's great advice. You know, I've, I've just decided I'm meditation. Either I just don't get it or um, it's not where I need to go. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, is it Gautam? Gautam Chatter? Gautam, yeah, Gautam, my oh, husband. Gautam, thanks, Gautam. Um, Due to COVID, you've never actually met, sadly, despite being oh, in the same. I know. It, it'll be over soon. Yeah. Um, Let's live in hope. So, Gautam wants to know about the importance of breathing properly, which is a great question because it's, um, I don't think people realize just how important it is. It is probably the most crucial, in my opinion, the most valuable tool out of the entire book because every single place you go, surprise, surprise, your breath comes with you. And so if you're in a meeting, for example, and you're not able to jump into a meditation, breathing is the easiest way that you can control how you're feeling. And so even for me tonight, when I was going, oh my God, the call is starting in 15 minutes, I was just taking a moment because that's the one way that I can, when I really push air right down into my tummy, full deep belly breathing into all of those kind of dark places, the, the pits, the caves of your stomach and get fresh, new, clean air into it. Um, it's like, it's almost like your breathing is the captain of a ship. And the captain of the ship will decide on the direction, the pace, the rhythm. And if your captain is out of control, the rest of your body will follow suit. Whereas if you can get your captain as in your heart under control and breathe, it will then inform the rest of your body like, I'm okay and I'm going to be all right and I can handle this. And actually that message of just like, I can handle this is, is such an important one. And can be done so simply with with breathing. So yes, breathing very important. Thanks, yeah. Gotham. Thanks. So yes, I can only echo that because that's what I do when I have to speak in public. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Um, we've probably got time for one more question. Oh, as Susie's asked one, so we'll, we'll focus on the one Susie's Susie's got. I had one about the illustrations um, that I thought was kind of interesting because they're very cute. Um, so uh, Susie's question is any tips on how to encourage someone who isn't recognizing their an anxiety to encourage them to read um, Generation Panic? Well, I would probably, great question, Suze. Um, I would say to start with just giving them a copy and saying, oh my God, I've just read this book. It's brilliant. I took loads away from it. Why don't you check it out and see what's, what's going on? Because ultimately, if someone had given me this book uh, in mid-2013, before these panic attacks in 2014, I might not have been in the full-blown panic, but I would have then had been able to have the tools and the be equipped enough to handle it. So I don't know, I'm biased, just get it in front of them and also call the elephant out in the room. As, as those close to me will know, I'll always say what I think. And so if I see someone I might be like oh you sound a bit anxious or how can I help you with that or what's going on or tell me what's I don't know you know just call the elephant out yeah a lot of people need a lot of support right now so um mm -hmm. yeah a good friend Susie's going to look after them and get them a copy of Generation Panic um and oh just on that point good friend you know that's what it's really about um 
you know, when I was going through this, I felt incredibly lonely and embarrassed to say to any of my friends what was going on. But actually now, as I talk about it openly, and this is a topic of conversation that I kind of shout from the rooftops, it's amazing how many people also struggle with this. And so rather than thinking everyone else is sorted, you realize you've got um, solidarity and deep friendships and honest conversations that are about what's really important. Um, you know, one of the chapters is you are not alone. And that that is a huge part of this anxiety space. Um, you really are not alone. Like wherever you are, be that friend to go and help the person who doesn't understand or be that person who, you know, reaches out to the person who's struggling. Yeah, excellent advice, Aggie. So many people feel totally isolated right now. And mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be any positive or big answers ahead of us, mm -hmm. so it may continue. So um, great advice here. We all need to keep in touch with um, everyone to make sure everyone's okay and support them. Um, so we've got five minutes left, Aggie. Um, how would you best like to use that time? Oh, I don't know. I think oh. I'm good to go. Oh. I um... Here's one question from a oh, yeah. Simon Hill. Um, oh, that's my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, beads. Oh, oh. Lovely question. <laughs> Great question. Well, family were a huge support. To, you know, they were the only ones who knew what was going on. And actually they were, you know, my mum in particular was the one who said, I think this is what is happening to you. I didn't even have the words. I didn't have the terminology. And so my family were absolutely everything. And um, yeah, they, they were complete, you know, they, they I, it sounds melodramatic, but they saved me. They got me out of where I was. And this book is, yeah, a culmination of being pulled out of there, out of that dark space. Wow, very lucky, very lucky. Um, so, Aggie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh working with you today and um, feel incredibly honoured to be hosting and um, just delighted with the response you've received so far. And, um, you know, I, I, this is a shout out to everyone. I know you will continue to support um, Aggie with Generation Panic, you know, getting your copy. Um, I feel very, very honoured to have mine specially delivered <laughs> today. And, um, you know, don't forget about the power of recommendations. Yes, don't forget about the power of recommendations. Posting on social media as much as you can, uh, provide ratings, online reviews, honest reviews. You know, and, and as we've seen from Aggie tonight, you know, what comes from the heart from uh, reading this book and um, sharing a lot of that, uh, those valuable uh, tips and advice. Um, so we can make a difference in someone's world um, by supporting them, um, helping them uh, by providing a copy of the book as well. And, um, and Lara Quee says to listen to Aggie on the Coach Potatoes podcast. Is that yours, Laura? Lara. This is La yeah, Lara had very kindly had me on her podcast. Um, Brilliant. And I've done a, a number of podcasts and interviews recently. So do check them out. Or if you have anyone who has a podcast or wants to do an interview or is a journalist. I mean, I'll do, I'll do anything. I'm on such a drive to get this out there. So I'm so great. Even the smallest thing that for you feels inconsequential or silly to do is having the most profound impact. And so thank you everyone for, for already buying and already sharing and um, yeah, long may it continue. I, I'm so, so grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you even for your time tonight. Yeah, thank you. Um, just before you go, Gabriel, Gabriel's asking, how can we get in touch with you? Um, so do follow me on, um, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on uh, Instagram at Aggie Heal. So that's A-G-I and then Heal, H-E-A-L-E. -E. The website is www.generationpanic.com um, and you have my email from the event tonight so please do um, reach out I'm happy to do anything and yeah spread the word thank you so much fantastic so Aggie's it's very easy to get hold of yeah <laughs> you'll find me you'll find me 
good luck with Generation uh, Panic, Aggie. It's an amazing achievement. And I know it's going to go on to help um, a lot of people. It's going to benefit uh, a lot of people. And uh, we're here to support you and to um, get the word out as well. So congratulations. Um, as I said, an amazing achievement and um, enjoy the, the fun times now and, and relax and um, soak up all this love that yeah. everyone's sending you through this horrible virtual environment we now live in. Yeah. We wouldn't have been able to connect with so many people tonight. So thank you everyone for joining in. Um, and for supporting Aggie and her uh, book, Generation Panic. And um, it's been a pleasure working with you all. And Aggie, I'll hand it over to you, to you for the final word. Yes. So just one final word is um, apparently some of the websites have sold out, but they will be restocking. So please keep ordering and it will find its way to you in time. But honestly, yeah, thank you so much for um, all dining in and spending your time here tonight, this morning, today, wherever you are in the world. The beauty of the pandemic is that we have a truly global book launch and, oh, I'm just, I'm so happy. Thank you. Go and enjoy, Aggie. Pop that yeah, champagne. go have some champagne. Oh gosh, <laughs> stiff gin and tonic, I think. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Louise, as well, and Gemma for helping me host tonight. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, and breathe. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Your friend Rob Barmer's coming in. I don't know if he's been. <laughs> he's just I know. Poor Rob. Rob did one of the endorsements as well at the wrong time. Hi, Etta. Hi, Issy. Hey, there's Issy. There's Issy. Are we allowed to take mics off now? Yes, you are allowed to take off. Okay. Rob, Rob, hold on a second. Rob, I'm so sorry, but I think the timings must have got rejigged to Australia. Oh, he's jumped on. Uh, Hi, Rob. I'm sorry it's so late with you. Uh, no, no, that's fine. I, I apologise if I've missed if I've messed up at my end, but uh, congratulations anyway on the launch of the book. Very exciting. Well, this is the famous Rob who did an endorsement and um, I'll send you over the recording, which we've got from this evening, but I'm so sorry that it's so late. Thank you for dialing in, Rob. That's all right. No problem. 10, 10 p.m. It's just sort of firing just up. Getting just getting started. Just getting started. Exactly. <laughs> Have a good night. You too. All the best, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, Rob. Hi. See ya, as they say in Aussie. See ya. See ya. <laughs> um, hi, Essie. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I feel, I feel a bit like I'm hogging the limelight here because everyone else is on but has their mics off. That was brilliant. Absolutely oh, brilliant. Oh, thanks, Essie. Gemma, do you want to stop the recording? Fab. Um,